fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship a high he can weather any storm that blows he's got gold power from cheerios yes he's got gold power there he goes <laughs> he's feeling his cheerios 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 and so will you once you're eating cheerios every breakfast you'll say the cheerios taste simply wonderful too they're already cooked shaped like little round O's and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowl full, add fresh milk and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Go power. You'll get it from Cheerios. Try it, and folks will say... <laughs> He's feeling his Cheerios. When veteran editor Julian Carter started a newspaper, The Daily Leader, in Mead City, at the request of Mayor Tom Gilroy, the two men hoped it would help clean up the town. <laughs> Cafe owner and gambler, Thorn Stewart, was the chief target for Carter's news and editorial arrows. The gambler, who was actually the brains behind most of the outlawry in the area had no fear of Carter at first. But when members of his various gangs had been sent to jail as the result of stories in the Daily Leader, Stewart decided to take steps. Sitting at a table in the rear corner of his sprawling cafe, he talked with his lieutenant, Pozo Lyons. Pozo, we have to do something about this hombre, Julian Carter. He's dangerous. Sure he is. What about Mayor Gilroy? He's the one who brought Carter here and started him sounding off on that paper of his. We'll take care of Gilroy, too. But first, let's get Carter. Where's Ned Henderson? He's out front playing Red Dog. Then get him away from that game. Where'd you have that blasting party you stole from the railroad work gang? It's buried in the woods back of the place, not far from here. Dig it up. You and Ned get together and fix it for an explosion. I have too many plans for this town to let an hombre like Carter stand in the way. Now, wait until two or three o'clock in the morning and go to the Daily Leader building. At three o'clock the next morning, Pozo Lyons and Ned Henderson set off the explosion that wrecked the greatest part of the newspaper building. <laughs> Escaped into the nearby woods as the explosion rent the still night air. Yeah. We did a good job, Ned. Yeah. Look back. The place is on fire. Mayor Tom Gilroy was among those who helped form a bucket brigade to extinguish the fire. Soon the flames were under control, and Gilroy joined Julian Carter, who stood watching the partly demolished building. Well, Tom, most of the structure's gone. Yes, you've only half a building now. But the soul's still there, Tom. The press hasn't been destroyed. At least not completely. Do you think you can repair it? Because if you do, I'll help you. We'll start first thing in the morning, Tom. If Thorne Stewart thinks he can stop me... Oh, Julian, do you think Stewart did this? I certainly. Not personally, of course. He's too smart for that. But I bet my life he's behind this. And I'll have him arrested at once. Uh, it'd be a waste of time, Tom. Stewart's no fool, we know that. We haven't been able to prove anything against him yet. 
I'm sure if you question him now, he'll have an alibi for every minute tonight. Maybe he will have, but I intend to find out. I'll have Sheriff Blake arrest him at once. Sheriff Blake, on Tom Gilroy's orders, picked up Thorne Stewart. But there were a dozen witnesses to prove that Stewart hadn't left his cafe all night. And so he was set free in a matter of minutes. The Lone Ranger and Tonto camped in the hills outside Mead City and heard the explosion in the town. They saw the flames that lit the sky and set out for the town at once. When they reached the town, there was no sign of flames and the streets were deserted. Oh, 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 oh we're too late to help, Tonto. They must have taken quick control of the fire. Uh, we'd better learn what happened anyway. Now, there was an explosion before the fire started. I'd like to know how that occurred and where. Now, me find out, Kimasabi. Cafe is still open. Then go to them and get the story. I'll meet you here. Now, uh, me not take long. Get them up, Scout. It was shortly before dawn when Tonto returned. The Indian told all he had learned in his visits to the cafe, including the story of Thorne Stewart's brief arrest. Thorne Stewart, huh? Ah, him bad one. He's one of the reasons we've come to Mead City, Tonto. When I heard he was here and learned how lawless the town had become, I decided we'd better investigate. He must have a yes? man we know, published newspaper. Oh? Who's that? Him named Carter. Julian Carter? Uh, no one of the crooks have tried to destroy his newspaper. Julian Carter's not the kind who'll give up. And as long as he carries on his crusade against outlaws, his life will be in danger. From now on, we'll keep an eye on him and on Thorne Stewart. <laughs> Next day, Julian Carter and his friend, Mayor Tom Gilroy, worked hard, putting the damaged printing press together. Finally, late in the afternoon, it was in working order once more. A few minutes later, Pozo Lyon made his way through the rear door to Thorne Stewart's office at the side of the cafe. Boss, you know what? what? Carter and the mayor have been working on the press right out in the open. They fixed it. I passed the place just now and it was working. Well, you better make sure they don't put out that paper again. I want Carter silenced him. And why not do it the easy way? He's right out in the open now, an easy target. I could take him just like that. Gilroy, too, if you want me to. Gilroy, huh? Say, why not Gilroy, too? Well, I told you that once before, boss. He's the one who started this. Hmm. Pozo, uh, did you notice if Sheriff Blake's around town? Yeah, he's in his office. I saw him there on my way here. That's why I had to pull back and come here the roundabout way. I didn't want him to see me. Why do you ask, boss? Get Ned Henderson. Mask yourselves and use rifles. If they're in the open like you say, they are. They're setups, boss. And we can take shots at them without being seen from the street. Good. But wait about 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to the sheriff's office. What? <laughs> Don't look so surprised. Yeah, I'll go to Blake because I need an alibi while the shooting's taking place. What better alibi could I have than a sheriff who'll swear I was with him while something was happening? <laughs> Say, boss, that's a good one. I'm going to have Blake ride out of town with me right away. Oh? I'll give him some cock and bull story about trying to help find the men who blasted the Daily Leader building. Now, uh, wait until you see me ride out of town with a sheriff and his posse. It'll be getting dark then, but not too dark to shoot an easy target. Eh? That's right. <laughs> Ned's at Randy's Cafe. I'll go around back of the place and get him. All right. Only remember what I told you. Wait until I get Blake out of town. Come on, right. Outside, at the rear of the building, the men parted. Stewart headed for the sheriff's office, while Pozo walked along the rear of the buildings on his way to seek Ned Henderson. Neither man saw Tonto watching them from the underbrush. A few minutes later, the Indian returned to the grove of trees just outside town where the Lone Ranger had been waiting. Tonto reported. Me watch cafe office. Like you say, Kimasali, and wait long time. Man sneak in a little while ago, then come out just now with Stuart. Where'd they go? Me not sure. Stuart walk into street. Hmm. Other man sneak behind buildings. Maybe go to where we watched Carter before. Then we'd better go to that place again. We'll continue to watch Julian Carter without his knowing it. Him still working and building. Me see him there. Then let's go. Easy, steady. Easy, fella. Easy, fella. Come on, sir. Get him up. Come The 
curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Hunter Harry is a boy of fine. He brings wild animals back alive. He can capture lions cause he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. to continue. As the Lone Ranger and Toto made their way through the underbrush to a spot where they might watch Julian Carter, a body of horsemen set out from the sheriff's office heading west. Thorne Stewart's plan had worked. He had spurred Sheriff Blake and his posse into immediate action, and now the lawmen with Stewart were riding out of town on a phantom chase. Oh, sure. oh. At that moment, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined their horses in a spot where they could see the charred Daily Leader building. Carter and the other man are still working, Tonto. Evidently, they intend to... Look. Tonto's finger pointed to a spot in the brush about 50 feet away. Two masked men were emerging slowly from the bushes. They stopped, and each lowered himself on one knee. Tonto, they have rifles. They're aiming at Carter and the other man. Shoot! Uh -huh. Man and Indian with lightning speed fired their guns. One of the men dropped to the ground. The other turned and fled into the brush. The Lone Ranger leaped from his saddle as he reached the wounded Pozo Lions, who was trying to regain his feet. Pozo, oh, he's just gonna be full of... Stay right there. Don't reach for that gun. I'm not gonna shoot. I'm wounded. As the Lone Ranger pinned the crook to the ground, get him up, scout. Tonto rode after the second man who had dashed into the underbrush. Ned Henderson was mounting his horse when Tonto neared him. The Indian didn't fire his gun. Instead, he grabbed his lariat and threw it around the crook, pulling Henderson back onto the ground. Whoa, scout, hope I'll hold. Me catch you. You not get away. Oh, look here, easy, easy, easy fella. You, you shut mouth. Me tie you tight. And take off mask. Bring you back. Why? Stand still and me shoot. Yeah, that's better. Julian Carter and Tom Gilroy, who had heard the shots behind the Daily Leader building, had viewed the scene with amazement. Now they came running to the spot where the Lone Ranger was standing above the wounded Pozo Lions. The Lone Ranger pulled the bandana from Lion's face, just as Gilroy, with drawn gun, came upon him. Get your hands up! I wish you had the wrong man. Don't tell me! Get your hands up! That mask... Is what I wear for a reason. Now, Mr. Carter... You, of all people... What's happening here? Tom and I came upon this man and another one... Just as they started to shoot at you. What? Julian, what is this? Who is this man in the mask? A friend, Tom. A great friend, I assure you. You don't have to point that gun at him. This man is the one you want. He's wounded. Oh, look, I'm dying. Look at the way I'm bleeding. You'll not die. You're not hurt that badly. I know this, hombre. Your name's Pozo Lyons, isn't it? You came into this town when... Hey, look. Here comes Tonto with the other man. He has him tied up with a lariat. I know that one, too. Ned Henderson. Say, he used to be one of Stewart's men. Back in Dodge City when I was there, he was arrested for a stage holdup. Oh, Scott. Oh, fella. He must have me. me get this one, too. Good work, Toto. Oh, look. You can't let me stay here to die. Get me to a doctor. Easy, Scott. Yeah. Easy, fella. He must have me. That man is one me tell you about before. One who go to Stewart's office. What's that? Pozo Lyons was at Stewart's office. Uh, me see him there. 
Them leave together a little while ago. I saw Stewart with Sheriff Blake and his posse. They rode out of town. They must have set off just about the time Pozo Lyons and Ned Henderson were getting ready to commit murder. That sounds like something Stewart would do. Yes, every time anything's happened in this town that implicated him, he's managed to have an alibi for himself. Well, he'll not this time. We're going inside and question Henderson. Then we'll question Lyons. They'll talk or we'll know why. Come along, stranger. You're in on this, too. An hour passed during which Ned Henderson refused to acknowledge any connection with Thorne Stewart or with the crime of attempted murder. You can't prove we were going to kill anybody or that we had anything to do with that explosion last night. I saw you and Pozo Lyon start to fire at Mr. Carter and Mr. Gilroy. That's your story. Who's going to believe a masked man in court? What's more, we didn't fire the guns. So what you say doesn't mean anything. Oh, no? See here, Henry. Save your breath, Gilroy. I'm not going to say another word. I mean it. Ned Henderson refused to talk further. Tom Gilroy, impatient and angry, took the other alternative. With Carter and the Lone Ranger, he went to the doctor's cabin intent on questioning Pozo Lyons. But Tonto met them outside the building. You will not talk to Crook now. I'd like to know why not. He'll talk now. He'll not be able to talk. What? A doctor used knife to take out bullet. Give Pozo chloroform. Put him to sleep. You'll have to wait a while, Mr. Gilroy. Hey, Tom, coming east on Main Street. It's the sheriff and his posse. What? And Stewart's with him. Come on. No, wait. Get back here where we can't be seen. Quick, I have a plan. Do what he says, Tom. All right. Let go of my arm. We'll get back at the doctor's place. The four men retired to a spot behind the cabin where the Lone Ranger quickly told his plan. When he finished, Tom Gilroy said... It's a mighty dramatic way to try and catch a crook, but I... But it's the one big chance we have to actually trap Stuart. If it doesn't work, we still have the hope that Pozo will talk. Stranger, you tell us exactly what you want us to do, and we'll do it. Good. Sheriff Blake knows nothing of what's happened while he was out of town. When you're sure Thorne Stewart has left him, get to the sheriff without being seen. Tell him what our plan is and ask him to help. An hour passed. Thorne Stewart, back in his office at the rear of the cafe, was growing impatient and puzzled. He had received no word of any shooting in town, nor had he heard from Pozo Lyons or Ned. Then he heard a knock on the rear door. When he opened it, a masked man stood there. What did... Don't reach for your gun. You're covered. Close the door. Who are you? Uh, what do you want? Stewart, I had to get here as soon as possible. They've taken Pozo Lyons and Ned Henderson. Take it? What do you mean? Who's taking them? Can't you guess? They messed up that job this afternoon. They were caught before they could kill Carter. Pozo was shot. Shot? Jim? No, he's over in Dr. Phillips' office. But he's unconscious and not able to talk yet. Ned Henderson's in the jailhouse behind the sheriff's office. I didn't know that. I was with the sheriff. Yes, yes, I know. I was with Ned and I got the story. Your alibi is good, but it's not going to hold up once they start working on Pozo when he recovers. They'll make him talk. He can't prove anything against me. I... Wait a minute. Who are you? Does that matter? I was with Pozo and Ned today. That should be enough. Did you ever see a lawman wearing a mask? No, no, I haven't. If you agree, I'll get Henderson out of the jailhouse before he talks. You'll do that? Yes. I have reasons of my own for wanting him free. I can get him out, too. Well, what do you say? I don't get the angle. But if you do that... I'll have him out in a few minutes. They'll never know what happened. Before Stewart could say another word, the Lone Ranger, still holding his gun, went out the door and disappeared in the darkness. When Thorne Stewart heard the banging outside the rear door of his office, he reached for his gun. Then slowly, he went to the door and opened it, unaware that the door behind him had opened slightly. Boss, here I am. I got out. Oh, step inside before someone sees you. <laughs> The masked man did it, boss. Said you want me to come here. I didn't say that. What? You should know better to come here after escaping from jail. Well, you'll have to get out again. But first, tell me what happened this afternoon. Ned Henderson told of the attempted murder and the aftermath. Say, Ned, you didn't tell him anything about the explosion last night? No, I didn't say a word. Said I didn't know you. But uh, what about Pozo, boss? That's what I'm afraid of. If he's hurt badly and going to die, he might get a bad case of conscience. What the masked man said is true. What'd he say? That the alibi I set up with the sheriff wouldn't stick once Pozo started to talk. 
I wanted you to kill Cutter and Gilroy, but you fell down. That's the first time. We've done a lot of jobs for you since we came here, boss, and they all went over big. You messed up that thing last night? You didn't destroy Carter's printing press. Well, there were other jobs, I tell you. What about the Lawrence Bank holdup, the Dodge City stage? We handled those. After I set them up for you, yeah. But, Ned, you can't stay here. First, I want you to try to get into a doctor's office. I want you to kill Pozo so he'll not talk you. I'm afraid that's hey. another job you'll fall down on, Stuart. The masked man again. Well, you... My wrists are shut. I shoot him. Don't move, Henderson. Gilroy. Carter. Yes, Stuart. With Sheriff Blake, too. Arrest him, Sheriff. All right. Take Henderson back to the jailhouse, uh, too. It was a threat. Yes, the masked man thought of it, and it worked. You, you were listening outside the door of the cafe, is it? That's right, Stuart. While you were waiting for Henderson to come or for the masked man to return, we were lining up the people in the cafe so we'd have silence while you talked. And you certainly talked. In three minutes, you said enough to convict you for 30 years. Just think. He was the one behind the Lawrence Bank holdup. And the stage robbery, too. We have plenty of witnesses to everything, Stuart. But we'll get Pozo to talk and cement our case against you. Maybe you'll talk also, Henderson. Yeah, Maybe. I've said too much already. And it's all on account of that mask, hombre. If well, he wait, wait, Julian, where is he? Where is the mask man? Well, he slipped out the rear door a minute ago. He walked off with an engine. I saw them leave. But why? Why would he do that? Because he's done all he needed to do. He could see we have everything under control here. And he knew that between your offices and my newspaper, things will be better from now on. Well, he's right about that part. But the way you talk, you sound as if he has the answer to everything. Well, he usually does in cases like this. Just as he had it today when we needed him. You see, Tom, he's the Lone Ranger. I don't do Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. The road to success doesn't seem so rocky, does it? Knowing that champions are made, not born. Take the life story of Bob Lemon, ace pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. Bob played infield at Wilson High. That's where he got his batting eye. He worked instead of merely wishing. To be a champ was Bob's ambition. So he chose Wheaties for top condition. A pitcher now, Bob's made his mark. He still relies on Wheaties' spark. Bob Lemon, a Wheaties regular now for 19 years. A long time to be storing up whole wheat power. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Burn it in, Bob. Keep them swinging. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Because champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen.